Hey guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to build this timber out of foam board. So the first thing I did was I did some calculations. I used the UMX timber and I scaled it up 122%. Uh, so I just used like a caliper and a ruler and just measured parts of the timber and then uh, just added it 122% to it. I'll go ahead and upload a few Word documents here in the next couple days of the plans for this plane and so you guys can build it your own at home. So the wing was definitely the easiest part. I just used a 20 by 30 waterproof foam board and you can just purchase on Amazon. I'll show, share a link down below. And so what I did was just cut one inch strips off the end. So those, those are for the spar. So you, there's three one inch strips and then you glue all those together. And then here I'm working on cutting out the ailerons and flaps. I just measure two inches up from the bottom and draw a line. And I had an inch and a quarter there on the wingtip and then did a 12 and a quarter aileron and a 13 and a quarter inch flap. And then the remaining section is for the mid part that goes over the fuselage. So then once you do that, you need to tear off the half of the covering and you just need to do it for the portion of where you're bending this right here. You don't need to do the full piece. If you want to do the full back, you can remove all of it, but it can be a little difficult. So I just removed it just as much as I needed to. And then I go ahead and rub it against the edge of the desk and form it into a wing foil and then I go ahead and glue the spar in place and it is six inches from the uh, edge there where the ailerons and the flaps are and then just go ahead and add a nice bead of hot glue and glue the um, spar in place now I'll grab a fresh sheet of foam board and we'll start to do the other wing so these are the one inch strips i was talking about so you can build half a wing uh, with one piece of foam board so it takes two pieces of foam board per wing uh, part of my calculations when i first started this was i was checking uh check the weight of all the foam boards so they're about 108 grams per piece of foam board uh, and i planned on using about four to four and a half and i ended up using just a less than four pieces of foam board to build this whole thing uh, so it's a little over 400 grams of foam board. And then I measured electronics, so they're about 308 grams. Uh, and then I added 3D printed tires, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. And those added 50 grams uh, per tire. So there's the midsection. We just glue the two pieces together and use a piece of tape. Now we're going to go ahead and just fold the ailerons and the flaps back on the wing. And we'll cut a bevel on the control surface, both the flap and the ailerons. Now I'll add a bead of hot glue right there on the seam and we'll use a piece of scrap just to smear the hot glue. Make sure to get all the drips and the beads uh, removed so that way they move freely. Now that we have the flaps and the aileron set up, we're going to go ahead and set the wing aside and we'll get a fresh sheet out and start working on the fuselage. That top piece I cut was 3 inches and then 5 inches off the left and then 3.5 off the right. Now I take the 5 inch by 16 and a quarter and we're going to go ahead and round off the edges to make the mid portion of the fuselage. Once I have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and lay that down on top of these pieces of scrap and cut out the rib section for the fuselage. And once I have one cut, I'll just lay it on top of the other one and cut the same shape. And then I'll glue those in place in the mid part of the fuselage. When you get this part of the fuselage done, it's crucial because it, everything else can be built off of this. So you just use this for the shape and the uh, size and just build the nose and the rear portion of the fuselage off of it. The plans are basic sizes of the material but then once you start building it you just kind of adjust what you need to to make it fit. Now we're going to go ahead and build the tail portion. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and mark the center, put a line down the center and then we'll uh, measure about an inch off of each side on the tail portion and then the uh, portion that hooks to the mid part of the fuselage is using the mid part of the fuselage as a guide to what shape you need to have it bent to. 
and then you just keep working the material until you get the right shape you're looking for. And then uh, you just have to cut out some ribs. Uh, I just put two ribs, one on the portion that hooks up to the mid part of the fuselage and then one in the middle of the rear part of the fuselage. And then once you have those set in place, you're just going to add a nice bead of hot glue there and then uh, roll this over and hold it down nice and long until it dries fully. You want to hold it for about two minutes to let that dry all the way. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a wedge here on the back just to get the angle right on the tail. And then I'm going to put a square or a ruler there and mark a line that's nice and flat. And then you just follow that line down and then use the wedge and copy it on the other side. And then we'll cut that and glue it onto the mid portion of the fuselage. Now you can see I have a lot of excess material there, which is what I want. So now we're going to lay a yardstick over it, draw a line, and then we'll cut that. And that just lines right up with the mid part of the fuselage. So if you get the angle a little bit off, this portion of it will make it work really well. And then we're going to go ahead and cut the length of the fuselage and make it nice and flat. That's why I had excess on the back. And then we're going to go ahead and add a, a back portion to the fuselage. To finish up the rear part of the fuselage, we're going to make this cover. So this is another difficult part. You can uh, just make it a lot easier for yourself if you just make a flat cover on this. Uh, but I wanted to have that wedge shape for a design look. Uh, so we're going to, it's a little bit more difficult to do, but you just lay a piece of scrap over it, draw the basic design of it, have some excess. And then once you get a basic shape, you can just keep trial and fitting it and then uh, trimming off the excess. I trimmed the edges of this so that way it would fit inside of the rear part of the fuselage so that way there won't be any seams showing on the tail. And then we'll glue that in place and we'll grab a fresh sheet out and start working on the elevator and the rudder. Uh, these are pretty easy to do just because they're nice flat shapes. There's no rounding and curving and all that stuff. So basically just lay out a flat sheet of uh, foam board and get the basic uh, size there. It's 22 and 3 quarters wide for the elevator and 6 and 5 eighths uh tall and then we'll use the rudder the rudder is 9.5 by 9.5 you just build you just uh, draw a square shape on your foam board there and then just uh, basically eyeball most of it with a ruler and a straight edge just draw it with pencil and then cut it out with your exacto and then again with the control services cut that 45 and then we'll add some glue to make the seam strong like I said earlier, I'll upload some uh, files in a couple days here that will have some plans for the size of plane this is. But most of this is just eyeballing it, using a straight edge and a pencil and drawing out what you need to, and then using what you've already built to uh, get the right size. And uh, just making sure the wing is level, making sure the elevator is level with the top of the wing, and then uh, just having everything in the right location. For the elevator, because there's a left and right, we're going to join them together using a rod. So I first use a one millimeter rod to bend in the U shape and then connect it into the left and the right side of the elevator. After I add the glue, I realize it strengthened up a little bit and that one millimeter wire wasn't strong enough. So I ended up removing that and adding a two millimeter wire in and that was uh, the right size. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and cut that notch out, add a nice bead of glue there, and then glue the elevator on. And you just want to eyeball that and make sure it's nice and level with the back of the fuselage. Now I'm going to use my 3D printer and print out some wheels and some rims that is designed on Fusion 360. Uh, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just go and buy the tires that the 1.5 meter Timber has. Uh, you can, I'll put a link down below to uh, click on their 4.5 inch tires. Or 108 millimeters and so I made them the same size as the actual timber uh, the horizon cells. I'm using two millimeter wire to bend the landing gear. Uh, it's a one inch for the tire to sit on and then four and a half inches uh, for the diagonal part that's at a 50 degree angle. Okay, now I'll go ahead and glue this uh, landing gear in place and you just want that to be just past the leading edge of the wing. So I put it about a half inch behind the leading edge of the wing. Uh, you can just lay the wing on top of the fuselage to kind of eyeball where that's at. Now 
Now we'll just use some CA glue and we'll glue the wheels together. And if you just put one small bead of hot glue on the axle there, it'll hold the tire on just fine. Okay, now we're gonna work on the nose portion. So we're just gonna grab a piece of foam board. This is from the elevator and the rudder piece. And we're gonna use the mid portion of the fuselage as a measuring tool. And we're just gonna add a couple lines there to see where the lines are gonna be at for the seam. And we're gonna go ahead and just round that edge off again, just like we did with everything else and get the shape right and then we'll just test fit it up against the mid portion to make sure it lines up okay and it's quite a bit extra material and that's why we're going to trim it later on and we'll add a, another rib section this will just meet up so that way that it'll fit with the mid section and then on the nose portion we'll just uh, squeeze it together a little bit to fit around the engine there and we'll make another rib and then we'll glue the nose onto the mid portion now we're going to go ahead and grab a yardstick and line it up and draw a nice straight line along the side of the nose portion to cut it off. This is why you want to leave yourself a little extra material to work with. Uh, this is a complete DIY build and so there's not really much plans I was going off of. I was just kind of building it as I go. Uh, so just leaving yourself a little extra material and then just eyeballing it and cutting the right lines and it worked just fine. We're going to use a quarter inch piece of plywood for the motor mount. And this is a 2832 brushless. I'll add a link in the description below to get the electronics for this. These are a couple pieces that will hold the battery in place and also hold the firewall. So we'll go ahead and uh, just cut those to fit and then hot glue them in place. And we'll cut an opening here for the ESC. Now I'll go ahead and start working on the windshield. This is definitely one of the hardest portions to make. Uh, so we'll just lay that up against the fuselage there and use a pencil to trace out the shape to cut out. And then just work on the edge of the table to get the right shape. And I'll just go ahead and glue that in place. You want to just glue one side, let it dry really well before you do the other side because you are bending this quite a bit. And then go ahead and do the other side and hold it in place till it dries. Now we're going to build a bracket to hold the rudder and elevator servo. Just cut a square out that'll fit those two servos in there. Use nine gram servos. And then we'll go ahead and cut this shape to fit down into the fuselage and then glue that in place. For all the controls, I use one millimeter push rod. And I just lay that over the fuselage and kind of get an idea of what the angle is and where it's going to be going in and out of the fuselage. And then just make a little mark with a pencil on the fuselage and then just stab it right through the foam board. And if it doesn't line up the first time, that's fine. You can just take it out and put another hole in the side of the fuselage. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and work on the tailwheel. I 3D printed the tailwheel also. It's a 36 millimeter tire. If uh, you don't have a 3D printer, you can just go ahead and buy one at a hobby store. And then I use a 1 millimeter rod to bend the uh, bracket for the tailwheel. Okay, now the fuselage is almost done, so we'll set that aside for a while and then we'll start working on the wing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut a hole in the center of the fuselage and start running the servo wires. Uh, we're going to cut the holes just aft of the spar and I'll leave the wing tips off so that way I can see where the spar is at and measure where it's at and where I'm going to add the servos in place. And then just go ahead and feed uh, these wires into the wing. I'll add links down below for the wire that I used. I just bought an assortment of uh, three pin wire and then uh, just use the long extensions for the ailerons. And then I had to build a Y harness for the flaps. So we're going to just use a little bit of hot glue and glue those 9 gram servos in there. 
and we'll zip tie up the wires. Like I said, I'm gonna use a Y harness for the flaps. Uh, I'm using a six channel receiver, so I'm gonna hook the ailerons up on different channels and then I'll hook the flaps up on the same channel with the Y harness. And then we'll add the Y harness in for the flap servos and we'll give it a test, make sure everything's working correctly. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these horns onto the control surfaces. I 3D printed these, but if you don't have uh, the capability of doing that, you can just buy some uh, horns from a hobby store. And I'm gonna use a Z-Bend pliers and a one millimeter rod and add these push rods in. For the ailerons, if you are doing the six channel receiver uh, like I'm doing, the ailerons don't have to be exact because you can trim the servos independently but the flaps you have to have those pretty accurate because you're not going to be able to uh, adjust the trim of each servo so you want to make sure the push rods really line up uh, for the flaps. This plane flies really nice without flaps it's got a lot of wing surface it's uh, 555 square inches of wing area so if you don't want to add flaps it'll definitely fly really well without flaps also and you can just have it as a four channel airplane. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and add the wing tips now that we have all the servos in the wing and you just lay a piece of scrap over the end of the wing and trace the shape out and then cut it out with a knife. This is an aesthetic piece just to cover up that gap in the top part of the fuselage. If you do that flat uh, top on the back of the fuselage, you won't have to do this part and it'll make it a lot easier. I'm gonna use an AR620 Spectrum receiver and uh, plug that in. And then we're going to go ahead and start working on the battery cover. I waited to do this just to make sure I knew where the battery was going to be placed at. So I kind of had it all together, had the wing on, and made sure the CG was going to work with the battery in the front. Because I wasn't sure if the battery was going to be okay up front or if I'd have to put it in the middle part of the fuselage. But it worked just fine right here in the middle. So now we're going to go ahead and add and make a removable battery cover. So I'm going to glue the nose piece on there first. And that's just a trial and error. Grab a piece of... Uh, material and just keep laying it over that until you get that piece to fit on the top and then uh, same with the nose piece there I just made a drill and then we're going to cut that uh, battery tray out you want to cut it just aft of the front spar so that way you have a little bit of a lip underneath that front piece so that you can have a this battery tray will fit in there now I'm going to make a uh, just a knob that I can turn on the top of the airplane so that way I can just remove that battery chair really easily. So I'm designing this in uh, Fusion 360. It's a pretty basic shape. Uh, just took me a few minutes to make it and it's uh, I'm using four millimeter dowel and so we'll add a hole in the bottom here so that way we can just glue that right in place and we'll go ahead and print that out. Just took about 10 minutes to print that and then also printed a horn for the bottom of the battery tray so that way it'll hook up underneath the windscreen. So there we go and I make it line up so that way when you have the knob facing the direction of the wind flow it'll be locked. And we need a little bit of an extension to hook the battery up to the ESC so we're just going to go ahead and build that real quick. I'm using the HT60 connectors and it's about a 12 inch extension. And then we'll go ahead and set the CG. So I just uh, set the CG 60 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing, and I put a nice uh, little mark there with Sharpie, so that way I know where the CG location's at. And we're going to go ahead and take it out to the field and uh, try to test fly it. Yeah, why? Well, hey guys, we're going to go out and try to bait and flight the uh, timber, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to be cool. Uh, Don't pull out. any G's on it's it. Fun. No, I wouldn't. Here we go. High speed pass with the almost timber. High
do it. That's a tipper, man. It flies like a tipper. You know? This plane flies really well, so if you guys are looking for your next build or just a plane to go out and fly, this is definitely a good plane. It's super easy to build. It only took me about four days, and uh, it's really stable. Make sure to look out for my next video. I'll show you guys how to paint it. And thank you so much for watching.